New Thought Messengers. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. How are you? I'm Shannon O'Hurley. I get to be the senior minister here. What a blessing in my life. I want to let you all know that those of us who are taking our masks off up here on the platform only have tested negative. I also want to thank you so very much for wearing a mask. We have people in this community that are immunocompromised, that are medically fragile. Let's keep each other as safe as humanly possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go team, go village, love it. Ah, so welcome, welcome to the New Thought Center for Spiritual Living. This is the time in our service where we take a moment and we acknowledge that we are on the ancestral land of the Kalapuya people, and we affirm indigenous history, experiences, and sovereignty. Let's take a quick moment and just wave everyone here. We turn around and just wave to our loved ones who are watching at home. Mary, is that the camera there? Woo! Hi, everyone! <laughs> Oh, it's nice to bring them in and for us to feel them in the room. We love you, those of you joining us online. We are an inclusive, progressive, and very, very compassionate community. We are dedicated to spirit-led social action in the world and helping to make this world a better place for all people everywhere. And speaking of all people, we welcome all people everywhere, all faith paths. Every, every human is welcome in this safe, glorious space. Know that. And not only are you welcome here, but we have mindfully and we have thoughtfully created a space here just for you, exactly as you are this day. Exactly as you are this day. So know how welcome you are. So let's take a nice deep breath. And I'm going to invite our beloved practitioner, Shelley Walker, for our opening blessing. Thank you, Reverend Shannon. Please join me as we take a moment to center in. Wherever you are, I invite you to rest fully in this moment. If you choose, you can rest your eyes or cast them down or find something beautiful to focus on. As you allow the ears of your heart, the fingers of your soul, to grasp this moment. This moment where we choose to remember that there is a living love that is everywhere present. That there is a power that passes all understanding, a peace, a peace, a peace. That is right where we are. That is, in fact, the very center and core of our being, emitting love and light. It is from this place that we speak a word of blessing on this time together, how very, very good it is to take a moment to remember truth this day, to remember love this day, to remember peace this day, to remember that there is a power that is with us and for us. And because of that, we are blessed and we are a blessing. And so I speak a word of gratitude on this time together. The message, the music, the people, the energy of it all. I am so grateful for all of it. And in love, in peace, we let it be. Blessed be. And so it is. And now is our time for spiritual practice. I'm going to invite those of you who are here and with us to stand as you're able as we sing this beautiful reminder. I don't know that the candle remembers today, and that's okay. <laughs> We're going to remember that there is a light and a love that is everywhere present and right where we are. Ooh. And so I invite you to take a breath and join with us as we remember this sacred truth that all that God is, all that love is, all that light is, I am too.
Good morning. My name is John Duby. It gives me great joy to serve this community as a practitioner and a trustee, and this morning as a reader. I can't help but believe that Kumarmani Mahakul was the inspiration for the character Yoda in Star Wars. So when you think you're hearing Yoda, you're hearing Kumarmani. He writes, like sun, this power of soul is. Sun is very big and powerful, continuously glowing in light. But soul is very tiny point. Self-luminous light glows more. Power is within. Hidden is pure. Like soul can do miracle. Like sun, 
soul can do miracle. Only awakening is needed of self. Wisdom of rays vibrates like light. Soul is powerful in creativity. In all values, soul is equal. Everything is inherited from God. This drives life within body. Unlimited soul, unlimited power, soul carries. Eternally, this is charged. Continuously, this glows sure. In purity, we can feel power. Like sun, soul can radiate power of affection and love. Mounting over mind, wisdom tells, decision taken is right ever. Thank you, John. Yoda, I'll remember that. Well, I'm your future artist this morning. I'm Brian Harris. I'm excited to be singing for you all. Now's the time for stepping out of place. Get up on your feet and give account of your faith. Pray to God or something. Or whatever you do What I see can make me stop and stare Well, who am I to judge the color of your hair? Surely all are feeling much the same as I do We got to keep this world together We got to keep it moving straight I'm on your right Trust and forgive each other A little love and we just might yeah, yeah. We gotta do something We gotta do something We gotta do something Yeah, yeah, yeah Thinking of the troubles of today Is it easier to put the gun away? Is it difficult to stop the world from show that you care? Everything and everyone you know is beautiful. Surely you'll be the guiding light to save us all. Maybe we can be the vision of prophet man. Yeah. We got to keep this world together. Got to keep it moving straight. Love like we mean forever So the people can relate now And if you're rolling to your left Don't forget on your right Trust and forgive each other A little love and we just might Just might, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't forget 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Brian Harris and the New Thought Messengers. It's beautiful. Thank you. That was awesome. All right. So good morning, everyone. It's so great to be with you all today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sarah Forbes, and I'm a practitioner and ministerial student. And for those of you online, I'm so happy that your presence is here with us as well. So my talk title today is Glow in the Dark, and to glow is to radiate light from within. In the Oxford English Dictionary, by the way, I think it's really funny that I'm quoting the dictionary, but, <laughs> but it was so beautiful I had to do it. So in the Oxford English Dictionary, it states that to glow is to give off a steady light without flame. Insects and animals that glow undergo a chemical reaction naturally, and this produces their light. So they glow inherently. And I believe that although some of us might say we are in dark times, and it certainly does feel that way, we are being called to uncover our inner light, our inherent light, and to glow from within. And if you are here today, or you're watching online, you are being called. So I truly believe that if enough of us become aware of our inherent light, that we will significantly change the human experience. There are many, many traditions that hold this belief. The one that comes to mind right now is just the, the yogic philosophy and belief that there's a tipping point. And if enough of us kind of realize our radiation and our glow, the radiating glow within us, that we will affect and ripple out a new world. But today, the way that I want to highlight this experience is through a story in a Gnostic scripture. And for those of you who are not familiar with Gnosticism, it is a kind of form of mystical Christianity and it's been around since the early, early days of Christianity. So it's been around for a really long time. And in the Gnostic scripture that I'm going to highlight today, I'm going to go over kind of a story that, that shares a little bit about how we radiate light. It's from the Acts of Thomas. It's called the Hymn of the Pearl. So... Thomas, the Apostle Thomas, is in India, and he gets arrested, and he's in a, he's in a prison, and all the prisoners come to, to his feet and ask for spiritual guidance. They want a story of insight that brings them hope. And so Thomas obliges, and he tells a story of a heavenly child. And in this story, his parents, his mother and his father in heaven, send this child out of the heavens and down into the land of Egypt to the middle of the sea, all the way down to the depths of the ocean, to bring back a lost pearl that is guarded by a serpent. So the parents tell their child that when the pearl is restored, the child will be restored to his divine nature. So it's important to note here, first off, that Egypt in this story is a metaphor for a dark land. In the times of Gnosticism, when it was first kind of forming, Egypt was seen as a dark land because of the darkness of the soil. It was also seen as a place of danger, a place of captivity, a place where one could lose themselves. And this is because, if, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Hebrew Bible, this is because the Israelites were held captive in Egypt and Moses was called through God to free them. 
So Egypt was seen as a very dangerous place back then. So for this child to have to go to Egypt is very symbolic. This child is going into the darkest place, the place most likely to fall captive. And so from danger, from actually from divinity all the way down to danger, this child must go and bring back the pearl. The Gnostics believe that this is a metaphor for what happens to human beings. This is the human journey. Gnostics believe that we don't come from this world. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. We come from elsewhere, and we're born with a hidden purpose that's beyond the material world. When this purpose is accomplished, we attain a new state of consciousness, a state that fully embraces love and joy and light. But we get lost in this world. There's a sort of void when we come in, a sadness. And it's our job to awaken. So the heavenly child is accompanied by spiritual beings at first, and he comes to a boundary that divides the higher and the lower worlds. The spiritual beings bid him farewell, and they let him know, we can't go with you any further. So the child descends further down into the lower worlds and comes to the land of Egypt. And when he gets there, he looks for an inn, and he finds an inn to rest. And as he's sitting in the inn, he sees a being approach him that's radiating light, and he recognizes instantly that this being is one of his own kind. And the being comes up to him and says, don't eat or drink from this land. If you do, you'll fall into a state of forgetfulness, and you'll forget who you are. And the child tries. He tries so hard to heed this warning. But he gets too hungry and too thirsty, and he can't hold out any longer. And so he eats and drinks from the land of Egypt. And when he does, he falls into a deep state of forgetfulness. For Gnostics, this is the existential condition of humanity. But it's not for nothing. This state of forgetfulness is important. It's part of our, it's part of our divine purpose. When this happens, a sort of alienation of the soul from our true nature happens. And it's from this place that our heavenly parents, the divine masculine and feminine aspects, come to us. Once our soul opens to a certain level of awareness, we gain insights. And in Gnosticism, this insight is called true knowledge. It's called gnosis. And this true knowledge has us instantly remember who we are. It, we remember where we came from, and we remember what we're supposed to do. So from this alienation of the soul, this poor child is in anguish. He's suffering. And he can't go on much longer. Something has to change. And it is from the anguish of the soul that he calls out to his mother and father in heaven. And immediately they reply. They say to him, it was proclaimed that all should come to our gates. You must remember, thou art the pearl. There's a couple things I want to highlight here. In the story, the mother and father in heaven cannot hear this child. They cannot hear their child unless he's in anguish. It is from the anguish of the soul that they hear this child. It's from a dark place that we are ever closer to God, to light, to love. And so we are required to know both light and dark. It's part of our purpose here. There's a, there's a line in Genesis that oftentimes gets overlooked, and I, I want to say it now because it's so important to what I'm speaking to. When Adam and Eve fall from the Garden of Eden, the Lord comments, they now know good and evil like us. They now know good and evil like us. It's such a small line, easy to overlook, but extremely profound. I'm not going to go into the whole us right now, because that's a whole other talk. But what, <laughs> if you want to talk to me about that after, I'd be happy to. I'm a religious scholar, and I'd love to talk to you about it. But for the point of this talk, I want to focus on the part knowing light or knowing good and evil. We could say light and dark as well. Um, so, 
the Lord admits that heavenly beings know this. They know both. It's part of why they're in heaven. And Adam and Eve can't fulfill their purpose as human beings without falling from the Garden of Eden. It is not a mistake. It was no mistake. So light comes when it's darkest. Dawn comes when it's darkest. And if we deny the darkness that, and we deny that we're lost in moments, then the awareness needed to realize our divine nature is not available to us. So the parents send the little boy a, a letter, and they, it's carried on eagle's wings, which I think is kind of beautiful, and the eagle flies down to the child and speaks the letter out loud, and as soon as the child hears the word, he wakes up. He realizes his purpose, and he descends down into the deepest part of the sea and finds the pearl. And when he sees the pearl glowing in the ocean, he notices a giant serpent guarding it. Charged with his purpose, the little boy starts to sing. And he sings the names of his mother and father in heaven. And as he's singing, the serpent becomes enchanted and falls asleep. So he's able to get the pearl. Notice here that he doesn't fight the serpent, he doesn't trick the serpent, he doesn't try to outwit the serpent. He sings to the serpent. Fighting the serpent would be to engage in serpent-like behavior. He sings the names of his heavenly father and mother, the masculine and feminine aspects of the divine. He proclaims these aspects as who he really is through his song. And then all the dangers in the dark, dark land of Egypt and the dark, dark sea fall asleep. So he takes the pearl back and ascends to the border, and there there's a delegation of spiritual beings waiting for him. And they place a mantle on him, and it fits him perfectly. And in the story, it's said that he receives a new skin, a new body, and he becomes divine. divine. He goes up further still with his new body, and he presents the pearl to his mother and his father, and they are so overjoyed. They take the pearl happily, and they send him up even further to the ultimate being, to ultimate reality. It is a Gnostic belief that the work of Gnosis, the work of attaining true knowledge, which is the pearl, just in case anyone missed that, um, but the work of attaining this true knowledge, this pearl, has to happen in the material world. It cannot happen anywhere else. And it is the purpose of a human being. When I first read this story, I felt so grateful to be human, grateful to be, and honored to be charged with this task. There is a special path of awakening available only to human beings, and the pearl, gnosis, true insight, true awareness of our connection to the divine mother and father, to ultimate reality, must be completely realized. There's another part of Gnosticism that I want to highlight here that's also really um, a big part of Kabbalah, too. Kabbalism is Jewish mysticism. And the idea here that is really cool is that God, the cosmos, ultimate reality, needs us, needs us to awaken. And that balance in the cosmos is only restored when human beings awaken. So this is really beautiful, and it's sort of paradoxical, right? Because God is seen as ever-present, all-knowing, all-powerful, but yet God needs us to do something. Otherwise, there's no balance. There's no true balance. There's no true harmony. So there's a bit of paradox here, but it's also really beautiful if you can kind of hold both things. So both in Kabbalah and the teachings of the Kabbalah and also in the teachings of Gnosticism, the heavens need us. This new state of consciousness is essential. And so it's important, again, to note that the child doesn't fight to gain this awareness. He calls out to the heavens in anguish 
proclaims his divine nature and only then is able to attain the pearl. So I want to talk a little bit about what this means in day-to-day -day life. Because diving into the depths of an ocean <laughs> in the midst of our suffering sounds really scary, right? And even if you talk about it in a more symbolic way, it sounds pretty scary. A lot of us aren't ready to go into the depths and the darkness and the discomfort and the yuckiness that lurks around in our psyche, and understandably so. And the good news is, it doesn't need to happen all at once. And the other amazing news is you don't need to do it alone. And I'm a huge advocate of not doing it alone. Some of us have very, very interesting you know, journeys here, and, and there's many of us here, including myself, that have trauma in our background, and so it's so important that we get the help that we need to, to approach our triggers, to approach our discomfort, to approach our darkness. We can process these things incrementally with help. We don't need to do them alone. There are therapists, there are practitioners, there are trauma specialists, there are all kinds of people waiting to help us. And so that is so important to highlight here before I go any further. So what this story is calling us to do, whether we do it all in one swoop or we do it incrementally, is to look at our psyche, to look at the shadow, to shed light on it. And when we are beckoned to fight and beckoned to lose ourselves, we must stay the course of our true nature. This doesn't mean we don't set boundaries. This doesn't mean we don't advocate for ourselves and for others. But we do it from a place where we're singing the truth, where we're proclaiming the truth in it so that we have that awareness from where we speak. So instead of engaging in serpent-like behavior, we invoke both the masculine and the feminine and this is a whole other talk too, but how, we, you know, that, how important the masculine and the feminine is in restoring balance in our world with both aspects, right? Not just the masculine, not just the feminine. So we invoke both, and we, we enter into a divine state of consciousness. In Gnosticism, this is how we glow. This is how we, re we radiate the light and the love of our true nature. Our glow becomes inherent, and we are forever changed. We then perceive ultimate reality, which is of and beyond the masculine and feminine. And from this place, there's no need to lose ourselves any longer. This awareness allows us to see the world clearly and to know the highest state of joy. It brings a new skin, a new body, and most importantly, a new world. We aren't just doing this for us. So what this can look like is we can spend time each day, it could be two minutes, five minutes, getting quiet and listening to inner guidance, inner guidance, 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 I don't know what that even is, guidance. <laughs> so inner guidance, uh, some might call it the intuition, this is the voice of God within, this is the voice of light, love within, this is the eagle, this is the letter of the eagle, it's our intuition. And if we get quiet just a little bit each day and ask for guidance and open up to that transcendent experience, eventually we are able to lull to sleep all that beckons us to fight. When we feel ourselves suffering, we can call on the light and listen for guidance, and then once the guidance is received, we can act from that place. In the story of the Buddha, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this story, the Buddha sits at the foot of the Bodhi tree and vows not to move until he has enlightenment, he's attained enlightenment, he's awakened. And while he's sitting, he's faced with an army of temptation, beckoning him to lose himself, to lose sight of his task. But instead, he doesn't make a move until he knows. And once he knows, he's enlightened, and there's no need to fight. The entire world for the Buddha is changed. The child in the story, story remembers his purpose once he receives the letter. And so we, too, can practice waiting for our letter. This doesn't have to be one, again, grand purpose where it all happens in one swoop. 
This is something that can be ongoing, a consistent practice where we get guidance little by little, baby step by baby step. And we can embody more and more light. I will leave you today with a quote by Israel Moore Ayavor. Glow wherever you go and let the light of God reflect in the world around you. You carry the light of God and wherever you pass, darkness must flee. Thank you. Oh, can we hear it again for beloved Sarah? Thank you. And let us anchor this in prayer, all of this. You're making me want to go back to the Nag Hammadi and read the Lost Gospels again. It's so metaphysical and glorious. Thank you for bringing that. Let's just take a moment and take a breath, the breath of life, allowing it to just move through us. Settle into that pearl of light at the center of our being that each one of us has, that we had before we even came here. Before we even had a face, we had this pearl of light within us, this divinity that is the glory of love itself. It is that which woke us up this day. It is this love that is sitting to our left, to our right, in front of us, behind us, above us, below us. It is, it is all around us, this glow of life, this light of life, this light made manifest is in every being before me and every sound I hear. Is this light, is this glory, is this love, is this spirit, is this quantum consciousness, is this God? What a blessing to live in this truth, in the midst of any challenge, of any, any experience of darkness or difficulty, to recognize, remember, and know that we are here to glow, that we are here to feel and remember this glow of love, of the divinity from each other and through each other. How good it is to be here right now recognizing and remembering this highest truth, holding to this as we move through this week, this light of life that leads us if we open to it. And so in this, I bless all of our friends and our family, knowing this same light is right where they are. I am so grateful to be part of this one human family and bless everyone who gathers in churches and mosques and synagogues and ashrams and temples and, and circles and yoga mats and community organizer meetings and prayer vigils and marches and nature and all of the places where we gather to remember this light, to remember this truth. What a blessing it is to be here now. I allow this prayer to be a blessing to any place that is experiencing difficulty, challenge, darkness. I bless all those in Kentucky navigating the floods right now and all over the country and this world, anywhere where there is difficulty, illness, challenge, pain. In this moment... I allow this beacon of love on behalf of each one of us here to be felt right where it is being called. This is how connected we are. And so it is from this place of connectedness and love and groundedness that I give profound thanks. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I rest in this truth and this knowing and I let it be. And so it is. Blessed be. Ah. Sarah, it is such a delight to have you here, and it is such a delight to know that you, my love, are going to be a minister in our movement. How blessed are we? How blessed are we to have her in our community? Yeah. Yes, we are. So this is our time for conscious giving, the time where we pay it forward. You know, we're a nonprofit. 
And what you give is how we do all of this. And this is a very special Sunday. We've been talking about this the last couple of weeks. This is our fifth Sunday match fundraiser. And we have our beloved core contributors who have... um, stepped up in such a glorious way, and they're all making a very special match to what is given today. So I invite you to, if, if you can, if you are comfortable, if you are able, to do what is yours to do and to give a little bit more so that we will all build this and all know that 100% of what is given today on the fifth Sunday goes towards our programming, specifically what we are doing here. What a blessing. Can we just hear it for our core contributors, please, very quickly? I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And to every one of you here and those of you online, thank you so very much. So with that, know that you can text to give. We're passing the basket as we always do. You can send in a check. If you haven't yet pledged, I invite you to go online and do that. It allows us to plan for the year and budget. So thank you. So with that, let us say our blessing. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Thank you. Once again, Brian Harris. Thank you, Reverend Shannon. I would like to thank all of the musicians on stage with me this morning. Our Ray Letts, (laughs) Kate, Faith, and Shelley. On piano, Angie, Edwin on drums, and as always, Adrian on guitar and Brandon on the bass. Thank you all so much. Sometimes the road feels like a mess, full of drama, full of stress. And life puts a fist right in your ribs You can hide if you choose to And no one will even blame you Or you can let them see how you deal with it That even in the darkest place This love can make you radiate doesn't matter how deep, how dark the night is Keep hope and keep on shining They'll see the light burning in your heart And if the road gets rough, just keep your head up Let the world see what you're made of This life's alive in your deepest parts Like a flame, like a burning star You can shine right where you are You're made to glow in the dark Don't be ashamed of your past If you're shattered like a piece of glass The more broke you are, the more light gets through Show your wounds and your flaws Stand up proud and tall because They'll see the work love's doing in you That even in this darkest place This love can make you radiate Doesn't matter how deep, how dark the night is Keep hope and keep on shining They'll see the light burning in your heart And if the world gets rough, just keep your head up Let the world see what you're made of Alive in your deepest parts Like a flame, like a burning star You can shine right where you are You're made to glow in the dark shining they'll see the light burning in your heart and if the road gets rough just keep your head up to the world see what you're made of this love's alive in your deepest parts like a flame like a burning 
star, you can shine right where you are. You're made to glow in the dark. very much. <laughs> Brian Harris, the New Thought Messengers. Shelly, Faith, Kate. Thank you, Angie, on piano. Thank you so very much. What a perfect song. You are meant to glow in the dark. That is so great. That is so perfect. I have a couple of quick announcements for you. Um, a reminder, our community-wide retreat is... I, I, I was... Hello. Lots of papers, and I don't usually hold a mic, as you know. Hang on. Bear with me. There we go. Um, so, October 21st, 22nd, 23rd is our community fall retreat. I know that feels far away. It will be here like that. And it is selling out very quickly. Um, just know, it is... I'm so excited about this retreat. It's called Stepping into the Sacred, a time for spiritual practices, connection, and joy. Join me, join me, uh, and fellow like-minded kindred spirits for a weekend of spiritual practices and connection and really, really cultivating joy, glowing, glowing during this time. I'm so excited. Everyone will be tested that morning of the retreat so that we can gather safely together without wearing masks, unless, of course, you prefer to wear them. All the details are on our website, newthoughtcsl.org. 75 bucks holds your spot. You can do that either online or outside. And this retreat is going to be at the Canby Retreat Center uh, in Canby on the Malala River. It's gorgeous. Also, we have a summer class. Uh, practitioner Shelly Walker, where are you? There she is. Oh, my word. She is going to be teaching spiritual economics. You can explore key metaphysical principles which govern financial wellness, whether you are wanting to heal your relationship with money, create a healthy relationship uh, with money, or just expand your financial life in general. You will learn powerful tools from this master teacher right over here. And we are offering it at a very steep discount because it's summertime, 70 bucks off. This is a certified class. It's normally $195 because it's six weeks. We're offering it for $125, which is, which is thank you, Shelly Walker. That's beautiful. Um, and it will be recorded. It will be online. So if you think you're going to miss a week, fear not. You can have that recording. Also, if you are new or newish here, whether in person or online, and you want to know more about all the things that we do here, or just maybe a little bit about us, our new member orientation is going to be Sunday, uh, August 14th from 12.30 to 1.30. We're going to have that here. You can bring your questions. We'll have some uh, wonderful time together to share. Also, if you are a practitioner in the room or online, I get to see you and be with you today at 12.30 for our practitioner meeting. Um, I want to thank you all in the room who are here, who are with us. You helped to create this incre incredible energy that we get to share. I also want to thank those of you online who have joined us from Northern and Southern uh, California, Colorado, Mexico, Nevada, and all over Oregon. Thank you for being here. I want to invite the practitioners forward for our closing blessing. And Sarah, if you want to come on up, darling. Let's all take a deep breath. And just know as we move into this week, we have an opportunity to let our light out and to recognize it in others. What a blessing. What a blessing you are, Sarah. So with that, I invite us all to stand as you are able for our final blessing. May you go in the light, as the light, and with the light until we meet again. May the longtime sun shine upon you. All love surround you and the pure light within you guide you on your way. You are so loved. We'll see you. I release and I let go. <laughs>